part of the cloud. Okay. So, um, welcome back to the Trinity Business School uh, seminar series, and in particular to the Chinese Business and Economy uh, seminar series. I'm delighted that we have uh, today a speaker who is uh, a key player across both the policy and academic sphere in energy finance. And uh, Bu Qian Lin is, uh, among other things, he's, uh, as you can see, the director of the China Institute for Studies in Energy Policy at Jiamin University. He is editor of Energy Economics, which we know to be, of course, an excellent journal. Uh, I know personally it's excellent because it has rejected more papers of mine than, I, than it has accepted and with absolute correctness. <laughs> no, 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 this is the job. Um, and uh, of, of course, uh, he works there closely with Richard Tall, who spent many years in the Economic and Social Research Institute here in, in Ireland. He is a key player, not just in academia, but also in policy. He is very deeply involved in both uh, the Chinese energy markets through uh, his, his membership of a directorship of a number of, chi of, of energy companies, and also uh, as an advisor under various guises and headings to uh, various branches of the government. Uh, frequent contributor to discussions at the World Economic Forum. So truly somebody who has uh, their finger on the pulse of the world oil market. So without further ado, uh, I'll hand over to Professor Lin, and he's going to give us a perspective on China's struggle, like every country is going to struggle to balance the demands and desires for economic growth and development with the problems of ensuring that we uh, have a habitable planet at the end of that. So Professor Lin, over to you. You should thank be able you, to share Brian. screen. Yes. Thank you. That's very, good. Thank you, Brian. This is a very nice introduction. Uh, uh, I really appreciate this opportunity to uh, to share some of my views on the on the carbon neutrality in China. Uh, the the professor she announced last year uh, in September. Uh, that surprised everyone. Actually, uh, we actually talk about carbon neutrality a lot before, but uh, uh, China announced public published in public to the to grow uh, uh, to uh, to global community that that is uh, really a given supply to the community in China in energy and also in the in the in the climate change related areas and uh, before that I uh, think there's a carbon peak uh, that was announced much earlier than the carbon neutrality and carbon peak in my in my point of view yeah without neutrality, why you do something, that's for sure. But in fact, that with neutrality, the carbon peak become a kind of a, just a number, okay? Because uh, uh, when you think about peak, you can really put it very high, begin to go down, right? So that's one way to do it. And uh, with carbon neutrality, you cannot do that because if you put it too high and eventually you become very difficult to go come down. So you only have 30 years after 2030, that's a peak. You only have 30 years to go for, for carbon neutrality. So that means the carbon neutrality will force back for us to look at carbon peak very seriously. You cannot really make it too high. On the other hand, you also cannot make it too low because uh, if it's too low, then after the next year, you, you come up with a higher number uh, like this year compared to last year, then what are you going to do? So the, the right now, I think that we are preparing for carbon peak, but uh, I think the carbon neutrality is more important a mechanism to force us for the transition. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about particularly uh, neutrality uh, and economic growth. The reason for that is that uh, uh, China is still a developing country. Uh, let's look at numbers here. Let's look at number here. Uh, sorry. Uh, let's look at the GDP here. Uh, China is uh, 11. 11,000, something like that, compared to the US, UK is uh, substantially lower. So that means it's, uh, it's a developing country and, uh, and it needs significantly increase in the, in the, in the per capita GDP in the next 40 years by 2060. So I think this is the main challenge with economic growth to achieve the carbon neutrality at the same time. How are we gonna do it? Uh, comparing with developed countries, uh, consumers, Chinese consumer ability to pay uh, is a bit low. Uh, 
So the 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 cost of carbon neutrality uh, is uh, how you're going to pass to consumers. It's it's really difficult. And if this is difficult, it makes it difficult to uh to progress in the energy market reform and energy pricing reforms. And this is not going to not only affect the improvement in energy efficiency, it's also going to disturb the 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 the, the energy technology innovation. And this is a problem we are facing for a long time. We keep talking about uh, uh, electricity pricing reforms, and um, but just but was was, was unable to uh, to carry out uh, to a certain extent. Uh, the good news is that there's a shortage in China uh, recently, uh, power shortage. That's also surprised everyone because the China has sufficient coal, and coal is seventy percent of the electricity. Also has sufficient capacity because of the the coal fire system generation hour is only 4,500, something like that. The max, in fact, we have, we went to almost 6,000 uh, in during the time of uh, rapid economic growth. Uh, uh, that was a pretty long time ago though. But at least that go to 5,500 is really not a problem. So the, 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 with the sufficient coal, and also sufficient coal fire capacity, and you get a power shortage that that really surprised everyone and what is the reason for that and i will talk about it later so the policy and and the practices related to carbon neutrality will need to be take economic growth and we need to pay into account and that's the main focus that i will talk about today and then uh let's look at the any structure in the main region of the world in 2020, that's the last year. If you look at US, uh, this is a, in fact, this is a, uh, if you look at the number here, and I also remember the, the global average of the fossil fuel is roughly about 85%. You look at US number, look at Chinese number, it's also about 85%, okay? US is a little bit less, but China is really close to 85% to the global average. Europe is a slightly lower, and Japan, in fact, is uh, is actually higher than the eighty five percent. So the overall that that the 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 fossil fuel in the energy mix is roughly eighty five percent, and China is in the really the national the global average. So the the, the Chinese eighty five percent are how are you going to achieve carbon neutrality with eighty five percent of the of the fossil fuel, particularly 58%, 57%, in fact, this year will be go to 58, 59% of it. Uh, it, it is really a very difficult uh, and very uh, complicated situation. However, reducing the coal, uh, stabilizing oil, uh, which is probably about 18 to 19%, has been stabilized for a long time. And the reason for that is the, the dep oil dependency. It's really more than 72% right now. So that you cannot really afford to go further uh, because of the oil security. The natural gas will be the good one to add into the system for system efficiency. However, that uh, if you look at the, the, the resource endowment in China, it's not it's really not, not, not very uh, good number there. So the the I will assume that the natural gas will continue to increase, but will only to a certain extent. Right now, the import, uh, the import is roughly about 42, 43%, something like that. And it won't go too far. So the, 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 the current situation of the fossil fuel mix itself is uh, reducing coal, stabilizing oil, and increased natural gas. In China, the good thing is that the coal reduction is good for air pollution control, and which is a very serious issue. Uh, for China for many years, and still a main issue for urban uh, air pollution. Uh, so this makes it easier uh, to, uh, to reduce the coal. And in the past few years, uh, we have tried very hard uh, to reduce the coal to a certain extent. Coal is uh, in energy mix is roughly reduced 1% per year. But this year, the number is, it, it, it's not good. <clears throat> uh, GBT or made, uh, oh, sorry, I come back here. Uh, the electricity consumption structure of, uh, of major countries. Uh, if you look at the US, uh, residential and commercial stuff is, is, and others, it's roughly uh, 
78 to 79 percent. In China, it's only 26 percent. Okay. So the 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 what that means is that the Chinese energy consume consumption is a focusing industry. So it's still pretty much uh, 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 a production oriented uh, electricity consumption structure. And this kind of structure uh, point to a main problem uh, in China right now. Uh, the, 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 if you look at the 70% uh, of the electricity consumption, roughly 45% is a focus on the heavy industry. And this is why the, the Chinese electricity consumption is very closely with, associated with GDP. And that could be a problem because uh, GDP will continue to grow. And if energy and electricity continue to grow, then how we are going to uh, address the, 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 the problem of, uh, of, of uh, China's uh, carbon neutrality? Think about it. China will possibly in the next 40 years uh, go to 20,000 per capita GDP, go to 30,000 per capita GDP. Now, if the electricity and energy demand is closely associated with GDP, then how big the energy system and electricity system will look like? How will it be possible to achieve the, the, the carbon neutrality? Uh, so uh, the, the, the it's really uh, a very difficult uh, situation for China uh, because of the, 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 the electricity consumption structure, uh, which is so, for, so much focused on industry. Uh, and also uh, it could be very unstable, very, very unpredictable. Uh, like other countries, uh, uh, electric, elect, electric vehicles and also the, 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 the in, what there will be a, there will be a, uh, elect, electrification uh, in the carbon neutrality process. Right now, the electricity is only about half, of the, I think less than half, 40 some percentage of the, of the total energy consumption. So I will assume that you want to achieve carbon neutrality, you have to really have to go to electricity because uh, wind and solar eventually will, will become the will be the main main source of the of the of the energy uh, and also that it present as electricity. So the 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 uh, the current situation of the of the uh, electricity consumption structure is really a big problem for China. I will I will illustrate it use a small example uh, later on. So uh, this uh, the 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 summarize a bit uh, on the on uh, when we look at the basic situation uh, in the in the last uh, three uh, three slides, the main difficulty of carbon neutral neutrality in in China included the economy still needs substantial growth. This is number one. The second one, high carbon content intensive resource endowment and energy supply structure. Which coal is 58 this year will be 59, close to 60 percent. Uh, high industrial energy consumption right now really is also 70 percent. Electricity 70 percent, energy is also close to 70 percent. There's no question about it. The consumer had low ability to pay for carbon cost. This is why the reform is always difficult and always very slowly. And that's in addition to that is a slow energy pricing reforms. The environmental protection and, and carbon emissions reduction are important part of China's high quality economic growth. The, the China right now consider itself in the development stage of high quality economic growth. And uh, of course, environmental protection and the carbon emission are important part of it. The main focus of transition, of course, is energy supply structure need to be changed. Uh, we, uh, according to our uh, uh, Chairman Xi's uh, the statement is that to build an electricity system with clean energy as the main source of supply. Here I change to energy system because there will be an electrification process, which eventually most of the energy will, will become electricity. At present, China has a one of the largest and possibly most effective energy system in the world. About 85% of fossil fuel, we just talk about it. In the future, wind and solar as the main growing forces 
will be the main body of the energy supply. Um, there are a lot of estimates in China about by 2060, how the energy system will look like in China. Um, uh, most of people come, come to conclusion that given the current uh, technology and the, and the energy uh, resources we're looking at, I think that the wind and solar would somehow have to be 60 to 65 percent at least. So the, the, the system will change fundamentally. And I talked to a lot of energy company and they couldn't understand it. They say why we, the current system is possibly one of the best in the world, why we want to change it. And, and it is really difficult for those guys to, to, to really understand that the, the, the necessity of changing the system. But I say, okay, let's look at from different angle. The Chinese energy sector in the past 40 years has a rapid growth at the, from the very small one to be, to be a largest uh, uh, energy system in the world. But you are pretty much come to a stage that, that it, it is really stabilized because uh, without carbon neutrality, your sector basically will be more or less stabilized with a much, much smaller growth compared to the past. But with the carbon neutrality, you're looking at another 40 year of rapid growth because the whole system really need to be changed. And you have to take this as opportunity rather than refuse it. So uh, I think that the, 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 the energy company and also particularly those guys that really work for a long, long time in energy field began to appreciate the, the situation of our carbon neutrality moving forward. And, uh, but, but, but overall, uh, the system will really have to change and change substantially. And what are the costs? What are the main challenges? In my view, I think that the stability and sufficient surprise should be the main principle for China because it also requires economic growth. And, and stability and most sufficient supply could be also the main challenge uh, looking forward. So the, 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 in my view, the carbon neutrality should be a force back mechanism for transition. Energy, environment, economic growth really need a systematic consider, consideration and a systematic transformation plan. In other words, you need to consider overall, uh, consider energy, environment, and economic growth all together. Otherwise, uh, it would not be a good plan because it will really devi deviate uh, from Chinese, uh, China's uh, uh, development goal. So the, 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 I, I summarize a bit, uh, and this is a really old one, nothing new here, but I, I just mentioned it here. Uh, what I mean by systematic consideration is really uh, uh, from supply side, it's an energy system with clean electricity, okay? And then uh, which can reflect the supply cost. Without that, it will not be sustainable. It also requires changing consumers' behavior, promoting the industrial structure, structural adjustments, advocating a circular economy, improve system efficiency through digitization, also smart grid. So what I'm talking about here is really nothing new, but to put it together for consideration, it not only require a very careful analysis and also very good understanding of overall system. Uh, then we're going to, I'm going to use a very simple example uh, to, to illustrate that why is need why require require a systematic approach uh, to address the Chinese problem. Uh, let's look at a uh, Chinese electricity generation mix last year. Uh, if you look at the capacity, uh, wind and solar is actually pretty high. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, about, it's about 24%. But if you look at contribution, it's roughly 9%. Uh, the the, the coal-fire contribute 68%. And um, uh, if you look at the numbers, uh, and I also remember 10 years ago, it's about 78%. So we reduce 10% of a coal in, in, in electricity mix in 10, in 10 years time. Now, to talk about this, what that means is that electric vehicle in China over the last 10 years is about 10% cleaner 
nothing more because you're charging electricity. And electricity, if you look at the past 10 years, it's really only 10% are cleaner compared to the, to, the, to, the, to the 10 years ago. The proportion of the wind and solar is high. Capacity, install capacity is high, but the contribution is really pretty small. It's 9%, something like that. Hydro is 17%, but contribute 9%. Contribute hydro, uh, the, 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 the uh, installed capacity is 78%, uh, 17%, but contribute 18% of the electricity. So the, the, the nuclear is 2%, but it contributes about 5% of electricity. So if we, if we do not consider the, the safety issues, uh, nuclear actually is a pretty good candidate for the, for the clean development, in my view. Now, generation hours of last 10 years, uh, the, 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 the wind and solar slightly increase over time. And, uh, and that indicated that, that the, what we have the, before the curtailment, everything has really been addressed over, over years. And really the government uh, put the effort into addressing the, the issue of allowing that the, the wind and solar to be a full capacity, but still generation hours is pretty small. Uh, solar is about 10,000, a little more, and wind is, is 2,000 hours. Uh, no, solar is 1,000 hours, wind is 2,000. Uh, the, the coal, uh, the, the dark ones, generation hour keep continuing to decline. What I mean is that uh, over the last 10 years, the generation hour of coal-fired generation continue to decline. The role of the coal fire in the, in the electricity mix has been changing over time. More and more involved in the P regulation and also to ensure the stability and grip security. Uh, so this is a good news or it's a bad news. From system points of view, this is not efficient. But from a uh, clean development points of view, uh, this is good news. That means the coal is getting out not necessarily by closing the factory, but it's actually by low the generation hours over time. And um, if this trend continues, uh, let's say in 2030, the coal-fired power plant generation hour go down to 2,500. Then I would think that the, this equivalent to a lot of coal-fired power plant getting out of the picture. So the, 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 in the future, the how China get out of coal, uh, there's a debate in China. Uh, there's a, some people argue that it should be out uh, by closing the, the coal fire uh, power plant. Some other, for example, from my perspective, I would rather do lower generation hour over time and uh, address the, 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 the coal fire uh, tech, tech, technical issues for it be able to participate in the P regulation and also to ensure the system stability. Uh, with the process of the, of the carbon neutralization, I almost certain that the uh, utilization hour of the coal-fired power plant will continue to decline. So that is why I advise almost everyone in China to not try to build a new coal-fired power plant because uh, if generation, that generation hour keep going down, your return is going to be a big problem. Uh, however, only for some key places uh, where it's really needed, the China really shouldn't uh, build a uh, more new coal-fired power plant because if you look at the future uh, financial returns, it really doesn't look good. Now, I, I, did, I did a simulation uh, uh, based on the government planning. The government right now related to the, to the, to the, to the uh, clean development has a two major uh, uh, targets right now. One is a non fossil fuel energy account for 25% by 2030. They, this is in the development plan. Uh, and I believe it cannot be changed, okay? And also that the professors, uh, no, Chairman Xi just announced that the, uh, the, the wind and solar installed capacity by 2030 will be, will be, will be 12,000 gigawatt. And that's to take these two uh, targets uh, as a base and do some uh, simulation. Uh, there, here there's some uh, assumptions I want to mention. The first assumption is every every generation hours will remain unchanging. And annual growth rate of the primary energy 
it cannot be higher than two percent. If you higher than two percent, then you cannot achieve twenty five percent of primary energy by twenty thirty. So the two percent is the maximum uh, for prime energy to go to to go uh, uh, at on average from now until twenty thirty. The annual growth rate of hydropower is two percent, which is uh, in fact is quite uh, quite optimistic because uh, you often see that all, there's some announcement of major hydropower coming to the picture, but in fact that uh, China almost used up. I will not all, but most of the uh, hydro capacity uh, potential right now. So the hydropower will not go really go too far. So assume two percent growth is uh, is really uh, a, a very optimistic uh, assumption. The average growth rate of nuclear is assumed to be eight percent. My own mass I also put together uh, as a nuclear. The eight percent the nuclear right now, China roughly by 20, 2025 will have. 70 nuclear power plants. And the government will continue to push for nuclear because the nuclear is a base, is a very stable. And in fact, that uh, it would, it would, it's clean. But the nuclear, the seeding for nuclear in China, in my view, is also very low. Uh, my guess is, uh, is a double, 140 nuclear power plants will be the seeding. The reason for that is that uh, they really cannot find a place to put it, okay? Because the Chinese population is highly uh, uh, concentrated in certain areas, and uh, you don't want to build nuclear very far away. So the 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 I think that the, the nuclear uh, power plant the ceiling is also uh, is also it it is below. I think double the capacity uh, uh, in sometime in the future. Is possible, but certainly more than that. How now? Let's look at the, the simulation. If the average growth rate of electricity demand, okay, here we based on all these assumptions, also government's main targets. If we put the average growth rate of next 10 years at 3%, electricity growth at 3%, while well, this year uh, from January to August is 14%, close to 14%. But here I only assume three percent on average. The proportion of coal fired power generation will drop to sixty percent by twenty thirty. Not much. Twenty twenty is a sixty eight percent. By twenty thirty, you still have sixty percent. If the electricity grows by three percent, and based on all the, all the assumptions that we're looking at right now, so the wind and solar will continue to grow uh, based on the on the target of the of the. And 1,200 gigawatt, and we put uh, uh, every year's uh, incremental growth. The, the wind and solar installed capacity will come for 36%, but generation only account for 16%, 7% higher than that of last year. So that means that with 3% uh, of electricity growth, and assuming that our wind and solar is, is going to be only 1,200 gigawatt by 2030, then, then you look at that. The, in fact, the, the end in the electricity mist, the the wind and solar still pretty small. Now let's look at five percent. If based on the same assumption, and let's put the electricity growth rate at five percent. Here I made a mistake. Here should be the five percent. Then the proportion of coal-fired generation will be sixty-eight percent by twenty sixty, same as 20, 2020. So here give you the idea that the, the not only supply is a problem, demand could also be a problem. So if the demand go from three to 5%, then the energy, the electricity general, general, generation mix of coal fire will be the same 10 years from now. So, uh, so, so, so this is the, the real problem for China because economic growth, because of industrial structure, and also because of the 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 the, the coal fire are uh, in the in the electricity mix, it's high to begin with. So the the if let's look at electric vehicle, ten years from now, isn't if electricity demand grows on average five percent for the next ten years, electricity vehicle is as is only as clean as today, not cleaner. 
So the 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 how the, let's look at the reality. This is the 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 electricity generation in the first eight months of 2021. Uh, this year, uh, the electricity consumption growth was a month grows by 13 point some percentage, almost 14 percent. Now we look at the any electricity mix, the coal go back to 72 percent. Last year is 68. This this year, uh, from one to uh, from January to August, it becomes 71.82. What I mean is that wind and solar are still very small. If we cannot, if we cannot really cover the incremental, then we have to go back to coal. And this is a real China's problem that every time when you have a good economy, uh, good GDP, and the power demand and energy and electricity demand will go high. And then you really have to go back to coal. So we have been trying so hard for the last past few years. Now this year, uh, the coal-fired generation go back to more than 70%. So the, 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 the problem here really pair us that the, 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 to address the, the to really uh, have a good uh, transition to carbon neutrality, China not only need to look at supply side, also need to look at demand side. And that's what I mean by double decrobing of our, of, of, our, of our Chinese economy. So the, the, the 2030 uh, carbon peak depends not only on the development of clean energy, but also depends on electricity demand growth rate. The contribution of wind and solar with the past, which is only the two uh, right now, uh, clean energy with the possibility of rapid and large scale growth is only 9%. So which really cannot meet the high growth rate of electricity demand incremental. And every time when this happens, you go back to coal. And that's uh, right now the government really encourages uh, because the China facing a power shortage at this point, the Chinese government encourages coal production and encourages coal fire generation uh, try to produce more electricity because at this point, not that many people talk about wind and solar anymore because it's really too small uh, to, 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 to look for. Uh, so the, the, the China's uh, uh, right now is a high quality economic growth require double decropping. One is the GDP need to be get away from fossil fuel. Second is that GDP need to be decropping from electricity and energy and electricity demand growth. In the past 40 years, the correlation coefficient between Chinese uh, GDP and electricity is roughly 0.9. That means it's very closely with, related. A correlation between the co uh, correlation coefficient between GDP and primary energy is 0.6. And if GDP grows, uh, if continue like this, uh, that what I mean is that if GDP goes uh, 6%, then we need to have more than 5% of GDP of electricity growth. And certainly more than 2% of primary energy growth. So how you, how you are going to uh, have a much better uh, Electricity mix and energy mix ten years from now. So the 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 uh, the goal of uh, carbon uh, neutrality require not only adjustment of the energy structure, but also adjustment and change of all social and economic aspects. Therefore, strategy and policy need to emphasize overall system costs and inclusive solutions. Now, uh. What I mean here by the by the by the uh, systematic approach is that uh, my understanding, and which I mentioned earlier, here I emphasize one more time is on the supply side you establishing a clean energy system, improve system efficiency and stability through digitized digitalization and also smart grip. This is on the supply side, and that's much easier to understand. The difficulty is in the demand side. The demand side at least you need to change the consumer's behavior. And, uh, and promote the industrial structure, industrial restructure, and most advocate in circular economy. In the middle of it, you need to have common trading, um, common trading also electricity price reform uh, in the middle of it to really uh, move the, 
to really move the not only supply side, also demand side uh, to be uh, to be uh, to be more close to the to the goal of uh, of carbon uh, reduction. Uh, in my view, that the consumer behavior really need to have a low carbon transition. Also, not only the supply side, okay, not only looking establish a clean energy uh, electricity system. That's not sufficient. The consumer behavior have to be changing. For example, uh, a lot of technology advance right now, we do not see the result of energy conservation. It's because, uh, for if you if you let's say that a, a commodity A the energy intensity of this energy consumption of this commodity uh, per, per unit go down. But what if you have, if buy two? So the, the, the consumer behavior somehow would really have to be changed. And also consumer will be very important uh, 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 player, not only that the, the, it can force the, the, the transition of production side, and also the consumer really need to pay for the, uh, have the, have the understanding of paying for the, for the transition. The capacity reduction of the energy intensive industries is the focus of the structural adjustment in China. Right now that the energy intensive industry account for roughly 45% of the, of the electricity consumption in China. And, uh, and this year, the reason that China has, uh, has a major, major energy uh, shortage right now is because the, the, the international price for, the, for, like the, for the main, a lot of like steel uh, and like, like alumina really at a, at a very high level, and therefore they produce more. And with a 45%, size of 45%, there's a huge impact on the electricity demand growth. So the, that is why we are facing a, a, a electricity demand growth much, much higher than GDP growth this year. And technology progress lead to frequent pro product upgrading of recycling economy reproduction are really all necessary. So uh, this is also a topic uh, talk about a lot but very few people really understand and really put the effort into it. But in the future, that like if China really want to address the, 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 the carbon emission, this also need to be one of the main focus. Our digital economy, uh, energy technology and smart grid, in my view, that will be the future for the, for, the, for the stability of power supply and also improve energy efficiency, energy efficiency system efficiency. Now let's look at our two. I want to have the two main focus in the in the system, uh, in the systematic approach. Uh, the first uh, main one is the is the 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 energy intensive industries. Uh, I look at the three sector of the of the we so called the energy intensive industry in China. We call it heavy industry, steel, cement, and non ferrous metals. These three sectors consume roughly 21.4% of electricity in 2020. If you look at the capacity globally, it's a 58 to 59% of global capacity. In other words, 57% of the steel, 58% of the cement, and others are produced in China. Do China really need that much? I'm not sure about that. And but with with, the, with the, this kind of structure, it really put the GDP very close associated with the power and energy demand because they are very energy intensive and they are also very GDP sensitive. So the, 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 this is a, a one of the main problems that why China's energy and industry demand fracture a lot, unpredictable, and also sometimes lead to the shortage and surplus over time. In China's co-consumption, look at the input output table. Only one third is used for direct consumption, about two thirds for capital formation. The capital per capital uh, per person in China is still very low okay, compared to developed countries. We have a study and looking into numbers. And we find out that the, the, the China's capital accumulation will continue to, to go. So that mean, what I mean is, it, this is not a good news for energy consumption. 
uh, the so I call the China is a production oriented energy consumption structure. If you look at United States, uh, uh, United States, United States is uh, pretty much a consum consumption oriented because in 2020, 2018, we look at number earlier. Um, and the, if you look at electricity consumption, residential and consume and, and, and commercial was almost 80%. China is only is less than 30%. So the China is the pretty much a production oriented energy consumption structure. And this is why the electricity and energy demand are very close associated with GDP. And this issue need to be addressed. How to address this issue? The most important way, of course, is to reduce the capacity of the energy intensive industry. And this requires the, the, the common trade. Also, we try electricity pricing reforms. Just a few days ago, uh, China has a major reform, had major uh, power pricing reforms, uh, which we talk about for many, many years. But because of the power shortage, the government take the opportunity to, 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 uh, to push the reform. The reform is that uh, for ordinary industry, the, the limit of the price high is 20%. But for the energy intensive industry, there's no limit for the price high. So my guess is that if the price uh, goes in the, in the situation of shortage, uh, power shortage, uh, the price can go very high for energy intensive industry. And energy intensive industry is very sensitive to power electricity uh, pricing. So the, 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 if that is the case, the demand can, of electricity can go down very quickly and China will reach balance very quickly. However, uh, uh, increased price in electricity price in China is always difficult. I have, I have observed the, the, the major uh, electricity tariff decline, major decline when we have a huge surplus and China uh, put in the power market, power market reforms and the, the trading uh, put the, Electricity tariff once lower than the than the than the than the benchmark. I have observed that before, but I never, in fact, observed the 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 electricity tariff go up very quickly and go up like 20, 30, 40 percent. I haven't seen that. So the this policy, whether it could be implemented or not, is still uh we still watching it because uh up to today, uh, I still haven't uh, uh, seen the news that uh, the, the, the electricity tariff for the in energy intensive industry go very high. I haven't seen that. So it's still, we still need to wait for how the government, uh, particularly local government, were willing to implement it, the policy, just uh, which just laid out a few days ago. Uh, if that policy implemented effectively, I will assume that China's power and demand, demand and supply balance would be, could be achieved very quickly. It's a, particularly because of the energy intensive industry consume almost 45% of the electricity. If these, those sectors uh, demand go down a bit, then we all, everyone has electricity. So the, 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 the but anyway, to, uh, to really, uh, Decoping the GDP from the energy and electricity demand, the, the energy intensive industry, this issue of energy intensive industry, the huge capacity really need to be addressed. The structural change will require uh, on, the, on the industrial structure and, and also GDP uh, production structure. And also the second important issue I want to mention here is consumers behavior. Uh, I keep talking about consumer behavior because uh, up to this point, uh, all the parties seem to point to the production side, not the, cons uh, not, not the consumption side. Two reasons. One is that uh, the China still push for the, try to encourage consumption, that's one. Second is that uh, our consumers, uh, oh, let's put it the other way. The production side is always easy to focus on and much easier to implement it compared to the, to the, to the, to the consumption side. So uh, in my view that the corporation will always do everything possible to sell products. If they sell, they success. That's what we call the market economy. All kind of advertising men, uh, all kind of ways to try to 
ask you to change your cell phone, you know, to do everything that's, uh, you know, they, they, they can sell products. That, that, that's the way of cooperation in the market economy. And we view the market economy is really good for us. However, market economy, in my view, unless you change the consumer behaviors, otherwise it's not a sustainable one. It, because uh, if the consumer will buy more if, if the income allowed to, and income will, will increase over time. So that, what I mean is that consumer will buy more and producer will produce more. So that's what we call the market economy. And that really has a problem with uh, on, the, on the natural resources. Now, if somehow uh, with the carbon, carbon neutrality, uh, there's a four step mechanism, we can begin to consider the, the consumer side, okay? Begin to change the consumer's behavior in the low carbon direction. Then the consumer's behavior will force the company to produce accordingly. And also possibly the industrial structural changes in China will be, will be much easier rather than government pushing for it. Government has tried very hard to reduce the capacity of energy intensive industry. In fact, this problem is no, it's not that we don't know it. But we have tried for a long, long time. It's not successful. The reason for that is that the local government still very, very much prefer the heavy industry. It's big in size, it has a huge contribution in the GDP, and also we put we pay taxes. So the 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 if somehow we can, uh, the consumers will begin to looking into the low carbon content and looking into the, to the, have a much better uh, uh, cleaner uh, consumption behavior, we possibly can force the uh, corporation to, to produce accordingly. And also this will possibly force the industrial structure adjustment uh, can happen quickly. So the, 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 as I mentioned earlier that the, the future policy will need to focus not only on the production side, also need to on the on the on the on the on the on the consumer side. And uh, how to put the policy together uh, every time when we design a reform, when we design a policy, uh, it's, very, uh, it's a very tricky uh, situation. For example, uh, everybody knows that the residential electricity was heavily subsidized in China. I think the consumer pay less than half of the, the supply cost. And we talk about the, to reform the residential uh, electricity uh, pricing uh, system for a long time. Every year talk about it. But every year, even up to now, uh, we put a reform on the energy intensive industry, a market reform. But uh, this time, the, the agricultural and residential is still untouched. And my point is that uh, well, they got to be formed. If they got to be a reform somewhere in the future, because the consumer, one way or the, or the other, will have to pay for the for the carbon cost. But this is a very difficult and very complicated uh, uh, situation. Market reforms to support the carbon neutrality. Uh, we have a carbon trade, which was uh, happened uh, about, I think a couple of months ago, I think the price is still pretty low right now, about 40 to 50 RMB uh, per ton. And the activity is not that uh, exciting because uh, right now you only include the electricity sector. And in my view that the government choose the electricity sector is because it's easy to calculate. Uh, and they all stay on, they normally listen to the government. The most important in my view is the, the if electricity price do not change, the carbon trading will not, the cost of carbon trading and carbon trading activities impact will not pass to the to the to other industries. So the 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 up to this point, because the electricity price adjustment just announced a couple of days ago, the carbon trade trading is really not much impact on the on the on the Chinese economy and most consumer behavior one way or the other. But I will assume that uh, carbon trade is far more bigger than electricity market. So the, but electricity market reform is necessary for carbon trading because if the price is fixed, then no matter how you trade in the carbon market, it's, it's not going to pass to, 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 to 
energy intensive industry is not going to encourage the, 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 the competitiveness of the, of the clean energy. So the, in my view that the electricity market reform need to be ahead of the carbon trading. But okay, now we are carbon trading, but electricity reform need to be followed immediately. Okay, uh, we talked about it a couple of months ago, and we're saying that now you're carbon trading, you need to have electricity pricing reform to achieve uh, the target, the goals that carbon trading is designed for. That was a couple of months ago, but now uh, because of the power shortage, uh, the government put in the, the, the electricity pricing reform. So, okay, so now that both electricity market and carbon market is together now, and let's see that what could, what's going to happen in the future. Uh, for the how the carbon trading uh, is going to affect the electricity price and it's going to affect the, the energy intensive industry and also how to uh, encourage the, 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 the cleaner production and also cleaner energy development. So the, 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 the difficulty I think we are going to face in the future is that we are right now we are facing a more and more unstable climate situation. And to stabilize, I don't know how long it will take. Okay. If you look at the observation in the last few years up to now, the, the weather is more and more unstable. And moving forward, I will believe this situation will continue because uh, you really need to attract, achieve carbon neutrality up there for some time for the weather to stabilize. So the, 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 you are looking at uh, more and more unstable uh, climate situation. But on the other hand, you are going to have an electricity system or any system which is more and more unstable because you have more uh, wind and solar and that my nature is unstable. So, so in the future, the system cost for stability will be the main problem uh, uh, for the energy supply, electricity supply, and also main problem for the cost. I'm really not worried about the generation side of the cost of the wind and solar, if possible, will continue to decline. And, uh, but the system cost, because of the double unstable, will be far more larger than we anticipated at this point. So how are we going to assume that the, 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 the power electricity supply is stable? And, and you don't have problem from time to time. So this is a really a big question, not only asking the solution from technology side, also asking the solution from economic side and possibly social side. So this is a overall, need to have an overall approach, overall assessment uh, uh, for, the, for the future uh, instability of system and also climate map, meet together and how we are going to deal with it. Uh, the common trading, uh, the, 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 the good thing for the common trading, carbon pricing, we all know, but how to connect with the real market that require electricity pricing reform, I just mentioned earlier. So put these two together, we assume that uh, we can achieve some result of carbon trading, but uh, the, the, what is going to happen in reality, we still have to need to uh, continue to observe. Another point I want to talk about is the globalization. This is the last one I want to talk about. The globalization in the context of carbon neutrality. Uh, we all know that the globalization of trade, uh, that's a, uh, we all, the China is heavily promoted. Uh, uh, and also that before, uh, it, it, it really, really uh, are looking, uh, looking good. Uh, and, uh, but the, there's a trade war uh, in the past few years. The globalization of trade is very easy to understand. It's optimization allocation of global resources. There are political factors but many economic interests. We trade because we both believe we're going to get, okay? And uh, on the other hand, uh, global response to climate change, there's also, in my view, optimization of uh, allocation of global resources. So be. But the difference is that this is the many responsibilities and contributions. So we really need a dialogue and cooperation. So anti-globalization and trade war is not we really, is not conducted to the CO2 reduction. There's no question about it. So that we are really hoping that globally we can have a have a have a have a common front 
you know, uh, to deal with the climate change. Otherwise, uh, it's going to be a very difficult uh, path toward the, uh, uh, the toward the carbon uh, neutrality. So this is pre pretty much uh, my presentation today. Uh, um, if I still have time, I'd like to answer a few questions. Thank you. Thank everyone. you very much indeed. Um, a very comprehensive look and a really interesting uh, approach that we often uh, imagine that if you, if, if you don't dig into it, that uh, closing down old plants and, and building new plants that are more green or sustainable is uh, the only way forward. But of course, your point being made about capacity utilization as a key uh, a key issue is one that really strikes home. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's, it's something that's quite simple in retrospect, but of course, quite a potentially powerful way to adjust the actual mix because these things don't run on 100% capacity, 100% of the time. So we have time for, you know, certainly two or three questions. If people want to, um, you know, raise their hands, uh, we, can, uh, we, we, we can take a few questions. Thank you again. You can ask me any questions, okay, not necessarily presentation. Any questions about energy in China, I should be able yeah. to answer some of it. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, hi, Lin, thank you for the presentation. So I have a question. I have a question regarding how the GDP is measured. So when the GDP, like the whole economic model was constructed, it was during the industrial revolution in the main uh, big 20 countries. And now the rest of the 80 percentage of the countries are coming into industrial revolution uh, phase. So uh, do you think GDP measurement is the right way? Because if you look at the GDP, everything is about consumption, like it's a personal consumption. So when you're saying like we should have a circular model, so the personal consumption is going down. And then it's about export and import, where again, you have to use ships, cargo planes, everything which is using coal and other petroleum products. So then if you're seeing government spending, government spending is about deforestation and building infrastructure and buildings. So it's, and even private consumption, private corporate consumption, it is also about building more projects. So it's, everything is adding to carb, like in, it's adding to what we are, we don't want to do. It's adding to the carbon consumption. So my question is like, even if we try to bring things down, the, the way the GDP is measured is, has to change. So is it going to happen? Because even if we think about 30 years or 60 years, we are trying to make it more greener. Again, the GDP is what every country- I, 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 th I think we get the question. I just yeah. want to keep, I want to keep things moving forward. Thank you. I agree that there's a green GDP. Uh, but uh, it's only talk about it that uh, really not really uh, used by the by major countries. So the yeah, in the future we might think about a different way of measuring it. But still, why not? The, the GDP is a GDP. It's a, it's a, it's a compatible. Uh, people get used to it. So the, the what I try to say here is that how we try to uh, measure that GDP goes while the power and electricity consumption do not goes that much, and most we change we can change the the supply side are uh, quickly get out of coal. Then, then I think that we are we are pretty much uh, going in the in the right direction. Uh, I want to mention again that about the, my idea of uh, reducing the, the generation hour uh, for the coal system. The, the the Chinese coal fired power plant is brand new, basically every ten years old. Huge power plant, most e efficient, brand new and most efficient system in the world. There's some old ones, but they close most of it. They're going to continue to close some of the old ones. But all the major power plants are really brand new. It's good for another 50, 60 years. What I try to say is that instead of building a huge system of the, of the, of the energy storage, maybe by using the current coal fire system is cheaper and is also more reliable. What I designed for is that we are going to reduce the coal fire power generation hours over time. Let's say right now it's 4,500. Let's go down to 2,500, go down to 1,000. Of course, uh, during the process, uh, the, the capital spending of the coal fire power need to go to zero. You're going to tear it down anyway. So to go to zero is uh, it, really okay. 
some somebody need to pick up the cost. Mm. But from COVID program perspective, the, the story is a certain day of the cold measure that for the peak, also measure for the extreme weather, and also measure for situation that what we're facing today. There's no there's no electricity. So the the coal-fired power plant system in China, in my view, that you can need you know, tear it down, that's fine, it's out. You can also lower generation hours. If it doesn't generate it, then it won't have emissions. So the 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 over the next 40 years, to avoid the current situation that we have a shortage, we have to encourage the coal, taking the coal. We have to uh there's a lot of discussions on that with certain uh you know, that we have a shortage because we have a green development. A lot of talk internationally and also domestically, a lot of reporter ask me that, why are these kind of shortages caused by the green development? I said, no, because uh, the renewable is too small to cause a problem. It cannot be the problem. But in the future, if situation like this happen and we have a huge system of the wind and solar, then we got a problem with public. So all, what I'm to say is that, on one hand, we need a clean development. On the other hand, we, have, we really need to make sure that we have a stable, sufficient supply of electricity. That's fundamental. No matter which country, when it comes to power shortage, you try all means to achieve balance. So to avoid a situation of coming back, one step further and then come back, then I think that the, the coal-fired system in China, coal-fired power plant, so be uh, the system should be there, and with a much much lower generation hour, giving the space to the renewables, uh, and then looking forward uh, to ensure that forty year transition is successful. When we have a technology to ensure the stability, when we have a very cheap storage uh, capacity, that will be okay. The 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 coal fire should be should be out. No question about it. Okay, I'm I'm going to um. I'm going to wind up here because I think um, we, we, we've run a little bit over time. The question, of course, about dealing with stranded assets is a huge financial question as well as a huge uh, ecological question. But there's no doubt that, you know, for the foreseeable future, base load capacity through hydrocarbon based um, hydrocarbon and, or nuclear based uh, options are, are going to be required. I'd like to thank Professor Lin. Um, we have one question here from Karen Crotty. If we can have a short question and a short answer, Karen, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, uh, I'll make it quick. Uh, yeah. Just as you were saying, the economy's production orientated energy consumption is that a heavy reason why cryptocurrency and mining was banned just due to the huge amount of energy it uses? Cryptocurrency okay. mining doesn't use that much electricity in China, it uses it, 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 it it's there's a whole pile of other reasons why crypto is viewed with some suspicion and concern by the Chinese government. Uh, so I, I, I would, it wasn't you know, a contributing about, factor. Well, everything is a contributing factor, but it wasn't the main factor. Um, you know, the Estonian gov the Estonian financial regulator came out today and said the existing crypto exchanges should be closed down so that we can start afresh from new. We'll talk about crypto uh, in the new year, I think, in, in, in a seminar, uh, because there's a whole pile of issues, not just around energy regulation, etc. So okay, I'd like to thank Professor Lin. And yes. uh, I'd like to um, I'd like to invite you next week. We have another seminar. Uh, and in fact, we have two seminars next week, don't we, uh, Suan? Yes, we have two seminars. We have one on um, one on foreign direct investments. And we have one on AI-based uh, organizational transformation by a speaker from Baihang University. So okay. hope to see you next week. And thank sure. you very much indeed again, Professor Lin. And um, thank you for your time. And I hope you have a nice rest of the evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome you to come to Xiamen next year. Would love to do so. <laughs> miss, okay. my, miss my trips to China. Okay. Thanks again. Bye, thank everybody. You. Bye. Bye.